I share the grief that you felt over El Paso. Um, I grew up in El Paso. Uh, my family still lives in El Paso. And uh, I used to, excuse me. Mm. I represent El Paso, Texas, which was targeted last summer on August 3rd. We had a domestic terrorist who confessed to driving over 600 miles and 10 hours because he said he wanted to um, essentially slaughter Mexicans and immigrants, and he lamented the quote unquote Hispanic invasion. And these are words that um, he repeated that we have heard from some of the most powerful leaders in the land, um, the same language used to describe uh, members of my community um, by some of our elected officials. And so this is, um, a, I think, a very important discussion. And I think something that was mentioned earlier, we have to call this out. When we don't call it out, we essentially give it cover. When we give it cover, we give it life and we give it power. And there's no greater testament to that than what happened in El Paso, Texas on August 3rd. Yes, sir. Um, Representative, first, um, um, I'd like just, just to say that uh, I share the grief that you felt over El Paso. Um, I grew up in El Paso. Uh, my family still lives in El Paso. And uh, I used to, excuse me, I used to ride my bike to the to the place where the shooting occurred. Um, I think I think Representative Kelly um, made an excellent point when he talked about the military as being one of the most diverse institutions in our country. Forty percent of our, our military personnel, active duty military personnel, are a racial or ethnic minority. Um, more than fifty percent of of the women in the services are and our military recognizes over 200 religious faiths. And we need leaders who, um, civilian and military leaders alike, um, who uh, appreciate, acknowledge, and support um, that diversity, which is a strength. I was deeply disappointed to see an individual nominated for the top personnel job at the department who has espoused dangerous, a dangerous and radical intolerance for multiculturalism in America, which is essentially the foundation of who we are as a country. J. David Patterson was a presidential appointment, but he previously served as a principal deputy undersecretary. Should we be concerned that someone who, obviously he was a, a, a presidential nominee, but he was within the Department of Defense for many years and rose through the ranks, what does it tell us that someone is able to ascend in this manner with these kinds of views about minorities and about America? Well, I'll just say that I think it's completely unacceptable. You cannot have somebody working in the Department of Defense involved with the Armed Forces, the Pentagon, who doesn't believe the bedrock principles about equality. Um, and that's been said from, you know, top generals and other officials for a very long time and is stated in these regulations. So it just should not be the case that somebody who disagrees with that vision of our society and how it's reflected in the Armed Forces should be in any position of power. Thank you.